Welcome to the World Esports Championships Qualifier for Nigeria. The road to IESF, road to Riyadh. And we are at the playoff stage. This is your host, your caster, Kronos. I'm going to be bringing you the action from today for these wonderful matches that are going to take place in the land of dawn. Just make sure before we get down and dirty to like, subscribe to the stream, and also follow us on Twitch. I believe there has been a slight bit of a problem on YouTube, so if you want to type into the chat, make sure you go on to the Twitch stream and make sure that you will be able to put your comments, who you support, and also whatever you want to say about what's going on, not only with me, with the teams, but also the production and everyone behind the scenes because we are putting up a show and we are here today for the playoff game. Is Anami no, no Kami, if I'm not wrong, where it says no reap it is. So at the moment, we are here. No reap and, reap and kill. My fault, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to make sure it's not a tongue twister. But here we are for this game. And I am pretty excited. And I know you should be as well. Because right now, we are going to get down and dirty. And soon enough, we will be moving into the draft phase. Because if you take a look at the group standings, we had two teams come out. One team come out from each and every one. If I'm not wrong, we have Izanami Nokami from Group A. So Izanami Nokami made it out of the Group A into the upper brackets to give themselves an extra chance, that choice that they will go ahead into these the game in Riyadh, and alongside them will be they will be facing Group C's leader Reap and Kill. And if you take a look at it, right, both the teams come out with three wins, zero losses, claiming all three points. So you know this is going to be a big game, a best of three series. We want to see what's going to happen, and let's not forget this is brought to you by the Nigeria Esports Foundation. And that is it for the group standings right now. Road to Riyadh. I am excited. I know you should be as well because this is the World Championships, e World Esports Championships qualifier. And let's not forget, once again, the Road to Riyadh 2024. As you can see, the brackets are up. Izanami, Nokami, and Reap and Kill will be the first upper bracket match bringing it to you. The winner will move on, and the loser of this bracket will move on to face I. The winner of Alpha Zeros and uh, the loser of Alpha Zeros, El Cartel, to make sure they have a chance to go into a second chance in the lower brackets as well. But for now, we are gonna get into the draft phase soon. Enough, once I get the confirmation, but as of now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here, and just as I speak, uh, we should be getting into the draft phase. And I just want to say, for all those Mobile Legends fanatics out there. In Nigeria, you want to know what the meta is. We know what the meta is. I don't have to explain it to you. If you're watching, you already know what the bands have to be. You know what the picks have to be. And right now, we're looking in at the ban phase coming in. We have on the blue side, Utah, Moon, Torian J13, Jinx, Takinaga. And on the red side, Tata, Azur, Hitori, Trevor, 
And I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the last name, guys. I Time don't read the language. The the and we can see the fans good. coming in. Lu Yi being taken off from the blue side. And on the red, the Joy being taken off the Always table. The Some way. of the meta Your jungler coming good. in with the form of Joy. It's my way or Your the highway. Is banning. But at the same time, we want to see... We want to see how this game goes on. Matilda being taken off, one of the strongest roamers in this meta. That heal, that guiding wind, providing the extra bit of mobility, that extra movement that you need is going to be really important for the rest of the game. But being taken off, you don't want to see it right now. And at the moment, they take off, they take off the Diggy, Ixia, and Arlot. So... You have Exborg that's still open. The Fredrin is uh, available. The Nolan is still up. And now we see the Exborg being picked up by Moon himself. So, at the moment, we have to see how this will go down. Will it be a really strong match coming in? However, you want to see you want to see if they go into the EXP lane or in the jungle. Flex pick is available, but Tata right now is going with this for Ramis. I love this pick coming in. It's a counteract towards the last insanity in a way, just because you have the Nether Realm to give it an extra bit of HP. That ultimate, that big ultimate, not only going to help you dive into the turrets, going to give you the extra HP for surviving if Moon dives into the last insanity. And what a better pick for the wrong position to get the heal to get that big cc can dive in possesses the anti-dive with that big minoan fury yes we have the mythical creature in the land of dawn and hitori gonna be playing this minotaur with the flicker and for now we want to see these final two picks coming in from the side of the blue team and maybe i was gonna say carry has to be the marksman that's available because one of the strongest marks in the meta you can go different ways you can build all damage you can build in a hybrid i am a little bit surprised i will not lie to you about this akai pick in the jungle only because you have the x -Borg and you have a frederick that's available Maybe the idea for them is having this Akai's heavy spin come out at the right time to make sure this Faramis dive with the Nether Realm won't be possible. Or maybe when the Minoan Fury comes out, if you use the heavy spin, just the tool to disengage in these team fights. And also Nathan right now being picked up in the goal lane. So you know the goal laners are picked up, so they're going to start choking down in the mid laners for the red side, for, for the blue side. Maybe choke out on these junglers. Jungle option can be taken out. Possibly remove the Fredrin once again. Yes, you have an x in your team, but still, you don't want to give the opportunities for that time. I think it still can be possible to give away the Fredrin, but they want to take out the Yu Zhong, so they want to go for a immobile mage maybe a strong maybe in the form of a novaria novaria still available such a strong mage in the meta the lilia is still up for grabs maybe even possible the nana so i'm not really sure what their idea is but we will find out because you know both the teams are super strong izanami no kami and also reap and kill so living up to their names in the group stage, once again, folks, we are in the upper brackets. The two Titans clashing off from Group A and Group C for a chance to get into the playoffs, to get into the further into the playoffs for this uh, tournament to represent Nigeria in the World Esports Championship. Yes, you heard me right. This is the road to Riyadh, folks. Valentina being taken off. Oh, that, I like that bad coming, right? I like the Valentina band coming in only because it goes to show how much utility this Faramis can provide. Usually, the answer to a Faramis is a Valentina on the other side, but taking it off completely is going to be such a big nuisance. And now they have to deal with it, especially, especially when it comes to this big Nether Realm dive. So, the perfect counter coming in. Ah, Ruby. Oh my god. The more and more, ladies and gentlemen, we get into this draft. Mm, Terizla. Maybe it could be a comfort pick. I do see the Terizla working out, but I like the Ruby a little bit more. 
I like the Ruby a little bit more. Ruby slope for grabs. Maybe they're going to pick it on the blue side. Could be a really good pick coming in. They could just put Franco and Nana. I, I know you can't I, I know you can't see me on the camera right now, folks. But now I, I I have my finger I have my hands on my chin, thinking about if this draft is going to work. Cause you want so the point of picking a Franco for those of you who are not aware of how pro scene works, how these team fights work, how the composition should work. You know, how the, when you pick up the Franco, you want to go for pickoffs. You want to have the instant damage coming in. Yes, you have with the carry. Yes, you have with the Nana. But the Akai, got to be a disengage. So, man, I can see it working out, but you need to have the early game pressure. If you don't have this early game pressure, it's not going to be for anything. This Franco pick is not is going to be completely nullified, especially when you have the Netherrealm and the Minoan Fury. So I don't see this Franco pick working out exactly. Let's not forget the Terizla with the dive. But on the other side, we see the Fredrin being picked up. So, uh, like I said, you know, they're, they're trying to force him on the Fredrin. He's not the best against an x board, but at the same time, it still is enough to contest these neutral objectives when it comes to fighting against this Akai in the Lord Pit, in these Turtle Pits. So, yeah, it works, but not the greatest at the moment, but it is one of the top uh, junglers in the tank jungle. Maybe it could have done the buy. This x work is just a straight-up counter for that. But right now, the draft is set, and now we should be getting in soon. And let me know in the chat which team you want to go for, which is your favorite team, what draft you like. It should either be Izanami no Kami, or it can be that team in Reap and Kill. So Group A, Group C leaders coming out the upper brackets. We are in the road to Riyadh, the 2024 World Esports Championship qualifiers. Yes, you heard me right, folks. In for the Nigeria region. And I am your cast, caster and host, Kronos, who will be bringing you this action. And we should be in a straight away because, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends of all ages, we are straight going into the land of dawn for now. And you can see these wonderful skins coming out. We have Poe the Panda. Will we see him Welcome going against this Legends. new sparkling Frederick in the battle, in the jungle? And here we are. The fight has started. We will want to see how this goes. It's a best of three nonetheless. And this first game can make a match point for either side. And we want to see, look at Torin J going and straight in. Want to annoy the opposition. Want to annoy Reap and Kill. He looks the buff straight away, but still will slow them down, but not by much. It'll all come down to how he can capitalize in this early game. Has to make the most of it. Look at that recall time coming in. Meanwhile, Moon and Azor just making sure that they're going to be doing a lot. And here we have a slight bit of a pause coming in for now. Must be some technical issues in the background for either team. So let's make sure, folks, we want to give both the teams equal opportunity. We don't want to give it any unfair advantage to either of the teams to make sure that they give us their absolute best in the in of these Road to Ria ESF World Esports Championships Quad brought by the Night Chief. And let's not forget, I'm your caster. I'm your host, Kronos. I don't have anyone else with me. I want to see the chat. There. Put your thoughts. When do you support Reap and Kill or Izanami no Kami? Because I know you have your favorites. I know you know these players. They've done their interviews. They've introduced themselves. And I know you watched it. For all of those loyal fans in Nigeria, this is a new face you're looking at. But I'm going to be bringing the action for tonight. I'm going to make sure I will do my very best to make sure that you guys are entertained to the maximum. But for now, we are here. It is a pause. Best of three. Let's not forget, right? They had, they got out of their group stages. They've been out of their group stages. They made, they made it out completely, and three wins nonetheless. Three wins nonetheless, right? So, just to make sure that they have give, been given equal opportunity, we will take a short break while the technical issues are being fixed. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned, and we will be back.
Technically, should have made a fix. It must have been some disconnection, but Azur, look at him. He's getting chunked down. This Terrisla's not having the greatest time against Moon. The export, that's the power of the export. The true damage that comes to the extra good assist. My ability, oh, the hook missing up. Tori and Jay proving to be an absolute threat right now. And it all comes down to this initial hook. So you land the first hook, you know you're going to have not it's just a slight advantage in the game, but the mental event. Trevor, he doesn't realize it. No communication coming in. There it is. Now Hitori making sure to let Trevor know that, hey, we don't know where he is. But look at the flicker one with the hook coming in. And when he goes down, he just makes sure he survives with the heal. Hitori forced the flicker out, but Tarkinaga going with the aggressive flicker as well. So both the marksmen and the roamer for the side of Izanami no Kami quite aggressive in this early phase of the game not much of a goalie but right now we want to see a fight breaking out jinx actually steals that gold buff way starving out the jungler coming in from breaking kill and right now we want to see the turtles coming up in three seconds level four finally the pressure but jinx will have a slight bit of an event look at that. he's going in he wants to harass the jungler coming forcing something out quite early like tata's Nether realm, but still not level four. They're making sure Hitori gets level four. You need that in order for your coming in with a pincer attack. Want to take down Tata? He is low. He should be going down. That is first blood, and he's an Amino Kami dry completely, making sure to take the advantage. And now they have the priority in the tur turtle pit. Unless Azur has something else to say about it, he has the penalty zone. He has the flicker. There it is. They bring the trap to get the retribution, but misses. Oh, he actually gets it. Jinx, he will get caught. No heavy spin being used. There it is. Some of the last attack. Heavy spin coming in. Azor being taken down. He's into the penalty zone. There's a nether reel. Tata is there. And Hitori going in with the Minon Fury. They pick up the kill on Spurs. Kono trying to buy it off before that they can shoot. Jinx will fall. Yes, he will. Bloody Hunt coming in from Torian J. And he will fall as well. Like Domino. They miss out on the turtle. They miss out on the kills. And Reap and Kill will take the advantage in the early stages of the game. You can see they even invaded to take the blue buff away. And if I'm not wrong, they were able to steal it as well. Uh, right now, I want to see Jinx. This, this, this pressure from Torian J should be constant, right? He should be constantly pressuring them entirely throughout the entirety of the game only to get his team the advantage and as you can see folks it's just it's not much it's not much going on jake's here he spots out hitori level six and they want to find something right this frederin has been on point his appraisers wrath with the retribution combination has been perfect and Moon trying to do his best to win out and azure a level ahead Still has to win out the minions. Meanwhile, folks, you attention to the goal lane, folks. We want to see a gank happening. And Tori going in. Oh, Tori and Jay flickering aggressively again. He is really confident. He doesn't have the right emblem, though. The flicker cooldown is about 120 seconds, so you know he doesn't have that extra cooldown that comes in with pull yourself together. So his flicker is an expensive spell. And now knowing that Hitori will have the right opportunity to engage, he has the flicker himself. They need to find the right targets. And if this Franco gets a hook, I think everyone's just gonna collapse at the same time. Spinning light wheels coming out, hook misses out once again. Meanwhile, the top lane, a solo kill coming in from Azur. This Terbrizla, it's supposed to be a losing battle against the export guy, but ends up winning that. And Hitori zoning them away. There's the bloody hunt coming in. We don't fear should be there anytime. Heavy spin comes out. They get the turtle and look at that they fall one after the other that is it and frederick should go down as well he dash out of there flickering aggressively two flickers double kill going on towards takinaga and this carry is gonna scale up and scale up strong and it's gonna be scary into the mid game of the, this match of izanami no kami versus a creep and the kill Good. They're trying to just pull away the blue buff to make sure that they can seal away retribution. Just that insult to injury. 
Hey, they're just saying friend, right? Hey, you stole my blue buff. Jinx says I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna steal one of oh, yours too. But now, folks, we want to see some big engages coming in, and we do in the form of Azur. He gets taken out. Molina, oh, he's swinging that big hammer. If he might get taken low, but look at that taunt coming in from the fridge, and they get the kill on towards Moon. And there it is. They want to get something more from the stop coming in. The Shadow Stampede and getting it back. Jinx, this is the idea of the Akai, ladies and gentlemen, but not enough. I don't think he wants to make the fight. Not able to get out there. He should fall. Then the rail. Just to act extra bit of survivability, and they get that kill. It's been a back and forth match. He's an Amino Kami, he had the advantage, but not able to make the most of the free pin kill. Just take it back instantly. But for the first time, I think one of the team is going to get that turret to get that man. They did get the bot lane in it. Tier 1 turret. It's going to transform into the top lane. Tier 1 turret from the opposition. Takinaga. Ooh, I don't think that was safe. He's, he's fighting. He's playing with fire a little bit. He does have the assassin emblem. So I'm not sure. He's not gonna go be he's not gonna be going for the Thunderbelt route, right? I wish I could see the items right now. If you could pull it up, please. That would be wonderful. Because you wanna see. Yeah, he's going for the corrosion shed golden staff. He's gonna be going for that demon hunter sword next. He doesn't want any of this true. He doesn't want this thunderbolt. He doesn't want the survivability. He wants to go straight damage. And that's gonna be absolutely scary in the mid late mid to late game. So it all comes down to this big engages from Hitori and the pickoffs from Takinaga. They get the tier 2 turret concealed just to get out of there. The hook, they get Tata! The bloody hunt is there. Will they get the kill? Yes, they do. And that is the power of the Frankel, the pickoff ability. Once it's there, they should be able to get it all. The advantage on towards the side of the team. Izanami no Kami. Just, just playing a little bit, a little bit of a skirmish. Nothing really too much, but meanwhile, they get the kill onto which the sword. This carry is getting fed. Takinaga gonna be scary. You can see now, the advantage slowly tilting. The goalie, not so much. Not much of a difference. 800 is not much, but in time it can add up, especially knowing that Takinaga is the one that's getting ahead, missing out on the hook. Once again, Tori and Jay, he's gonna be lethal with these bloody hunts. Has been on point so far. Not the greatest trap, I would say, but it's been working out for them. It all comes down to if Tata is able to pull off this uh, big nether realm. Victorian <laughs> Heavy spin quite early. They get the, the pressure of and Fury just to make that conceal. There's the nether realm and the penalty zone coming in and the Nathan is on the hunt. He gets the double kill thanks to the entropy and the interference of coming in. And this is where he gets scary. Yes, the Takinaga carry has scaled well, but this Nathan Trevor has something else to say about it. And he is putting up a fight, ladies and gentlemen. It is a level 1 lord and not the luminous lord if they want to get the contest and I think this Franco could be in a world of trouble to force the flicker out of there but Takinaga has his mini light wheels going and shadow stampede there it is the heavy spit from to cancel out Azur's penalty zone Jinx might get the kill that the rim was a little too late and there it is the bloody hunt coming in Moon has his frog armor popped off Tata my fall yes he will they get the kill so that's a 2 or nothing trade on towards the side of his Nami no Kami. They have the benefit and they might start up the Lord, which they should. And yes, they are. Unless, you know, we saw the Frederick steal it away, the turtle, right in front of their face. Just went in, appraises rat, stole it away. Utah. Might have something else to say about Molina. Is a play. Oh, look at Speedy Light Wheels. The Yuri might go down. We don't want Fury, but not enough. The damage is too much. And look at the damage coming. He double kill. Will we see a triple, ladies and gentlemen? We want to see that big savage in the road to Riyadh for the World Esports Championships for, and the qualifiers from Nigeria. Is an Amino Kami. Have the gold lead, finally. The gold lead has tilted 1.6k into their favor. 
Easy lore, Jinx. <laughs> I thought he was gonna die right there, but he's able to survive. He gets that lord. They should have the advantage moving in. Just backing off, trying to get something going, but... I don't think there's anything available at the moment. Oh, look at that. The fight started up. Heavy spin. Make sure to go on. Absorb with the penalty zone. Goes down but gets everyone. At the same time, no one feared with the Wombo combo and the Netherrealm to add an extra sustainable but the Bloody Hunt coming on to her. She's sorry. And Speedy Light Wheels does uh, the magic while the Appraise Trap comes down to make sure Moon gets his frog arm first. Hit. The idea is to take out this Marksman, which the side of Izanami no Kami has been doing really well, making sure Trevor gets taken off quite early, and so will this Faramit Tata on the other side. They try to take down Takinaga, but they're just not able to because this carry is just he's just too strong. Just too strong. That's why he's just one of the top, not one of, if not the top marksman in the current meta. He can be built so many different ways, but right now they just wanted to go for the damage route. It's just too much for them to deal with. And let's not forget, the more tanky you are, the more damage she does. So, it just goes to show how well the side of team is not going to come in. Work out. Torian J has been the king of pickoff so far. <laughs> They want to get one more. He has the bloody hunt. He has the flicker as well. Uh, moon. There's not much, right? Let's take a, like while the stalemate's going on. I don't think there's a fight that's gonna happen. Let's take a look at the itemization, right? You have Faramis build the lightning junction. You have that chunk out there. Never mind, folks. There's a battle that's breaking out right in the instant. And you can see last and Sandy Azur goes down, Nether and the spawn, Itori with the Minoa and Fury have these been coming out at the same time. Itori will fall. This carry is unstoppable. Legendary. Living up to his name as well. Cause at this point, who's gonna catch the carry, right? Who is the one that's gonna take down this carry? Is it going to be Mr. Frizzla? Is it gonna be the Fredrin? Is it going to be the Faramis? Because you have to put a lot of resources to take down this monster. Look at that. Talking about just melting the Frederick. It's supposed to be a tank jungler. Just melting it instantly. So. Maybe it's time for the side of Reef and Kill to think back and see. Hey, let's take a step back. Prioritize who is going to be the one that we have to take out. If they're able to take out Takinaga. If they're able to layer their skills at the right time, it should be possible. But again, the heavy spin is just too much for them to deal with. So they need to bait something out and something out early. The Lord goes into the side of Izanami no Kami, the Luminous Lord. And Utah should be able to pick up this blue buff. I think they should be giving it to their mage just to get extra little bit of mana. There it is. The, we're gonna be waiting for the Lord. It's gonna be coming out right now, ladies and gentlemen. We see the Luminous Lord should be marching down the bot lane. And yes, it is. So now it comes down to the discipline from Izanami no Kami. Do they have the discipline to push in the mid lane, in the top lane, and the bot lane? Are they gonna get these waves crashing in at the same time? That is the big question. Because if they are, then it will be possible. So, right now, we want to see the discipline. The mid lane is gone a little too early. There's another wave, however. Yeah, they're trying to push in the Lord. It has been going down. It's not a, it's, it's a Luminous Lord, so it crashes, takes down the inhibitor in the bot lane. And they get that finally. The top lane pushing in simultaneously. Heavy spin from Jinx quite early. Azur with the penalty zone missing out. And there it is. But no one feel along the width of the nether realm. But the speed light was just doing a little too much damage. Everyone taking out low. Last attack was popped as well. And now we want to see the appraiser come down. But it's not enough. The stacks are not there. Bloody hunt on the right time with the flicker in the forward direction. And Takinaga is just unstoppable. 
legendary indeed look at that damage coming out who's gonna stop this carry right now it looks like she is unstoppable folks they get two inhibitors the mid lane wave is just marching down and this carry can just regen right back up 11 0 5 undoubtedly the mvp for this game Utah has been putting in the work, but this carry has just been doing everything. All in the one-man show if you can, but Tata will go down. Last attack just thrown him away. Now you can see Azor in the back line trying to do as much as they can, but not getting the right target. The target you want to take down talking out, but this carry has been absolutely unstoppable, dominating this entire game. 11 0 5. Hey folks, we all know if this was a ranked game, we just hit that surrender bird right away, right? Like, we're losing so badly, we have... Nobody can kill this carry, let's just surrender. Call it a different game, but there's the hook coming in, the taunt is there, they take down the promise, double kill, thanks to the of Blitz, and there's the Minoan Fury, not enough damage, will they be able to get more? No, he flickers down with the rank of that penalty zone coming in, they finally get the shutdown. Heavy spin, just to zone Azura away, Utah should get the kill, but look at Takenaga in the meanwhile, nobody's able to get him, he is just a free farming, free hitting, just may able to get those speedy light wheels coming out. They get that legendary. At this point, it should be game set match, bro. Nobody's able to get this carry. Itori's gonna fall as well. Tata might get that kill. Takanaga has the immortality being popped. Still able to survive. Itori wants to go. They finally get that big shutdown. And you can see now that Reap and kill one press the advantage, but Jinx just says no. I am not gonna fall through your shenanigans. Once to get out of harm's way, the taunt coming in. Do they have the appraisers right? Not enough damage. Ghostbusters, they're chasing Jinx to the ends of the earth. Because <laughs> right now they want to make sure they get that kill and even survive. Appraisers right just missing out. They get the kill. And Trevor, Entropy to start off the Lord. This is the right time. They should go for it. And yes, they are. This is the Luminous Lord. And as we know, folks, as we go deeper into the game, the Lord will get stronger. And this Lord is going to be really strong. Moon, last and Sandy, just to get away. And we will have a little bit of a stalemate right now. Just to see how things will go on. Redrin going aggressive, wanna get that last Sadly out quite early, Appraiser's Wrath was dropped as well, Entropy to get out of there, Trevor will be a key piece in the Lord push, and look how slowly they wanna get by Tori, just a little too much, Netherrealm to help the survival, coming in, a heavy spin of being used, the no Minoan Fury coming out, yet we wanna see that big ultimate, yes it will do speedy life build, just to get them down. I think the aggressive positioning coming in from Hitori is just a little bit too much for the dealer. Look at Torrenjay. He's chasing this Fredrin away. This is so funny to see the hook coming out. The, this carry is just going to be on. Appraises Wrath in the wrong direction. And now they're just falling like dominoes. They get Trevor. Yes, the Lord is still marching down top lane. They have a cannon minion. They should be able to end. If they focus on the base crystal, no retribution. So they will not be able to defend and finally goes after such a back and Victory. forth game. It was such a back and forth game. Izanami no Kami finally pick up the victory in this best of three series. Game number one goes on towards their side and reap and kill. Need to find a better way to address this draft. Because let's take a look. This carry 15 kills, 1 and 6. That's 21 kills out of 26. That's like about 90% participation, right? Team fight participation, about 90%. It should be around 75, 80%. And take a look at the itemization. Didn't even go for the, the tanky route that we know. It's just all damage. I'm not sure if that Wind of Nature was needed, but still, there's such damage coming through from this carry. Just absolutely dominating. And for now, folks, we should be able to see what an absolutely fantastic game that was. And he's an Ami no Kami, living up to the name of being the group leaders for group number A. They have one game up. Will it be match point? Will the next game be the one to take it all away and move on to the next phase?
and put reap and kill down to the lower brackets. So for now, we should be going into a short break, folks. And we will be back with you for the next game. And let's not forget, this is the road to Riyadh, the road to the World Esports Championships in Riyadh for 2024. Brought to you by Nigeria Esports Foundation. I am Kromos, your host and caster. We will be back as soon as possible.
Welcome back, folks. This is your host, Nacaster Kronos. That's going to be bringing you the action now for tonight. And all the fans of MLBB Nigeria, you better be watching this. And if you know some people, make sure you share the stream so they can come and join and see the top teams in Nigeria in Mobile Legends battle it out for a place for the World Esports Championship. That's going to be in Riyadh. Yes, you heard me right. This is the qualifiers, the road to Riyadh that's going to be in the World Esports Championship. And for tonight, we have the upper bracket matches. Uh, the leader of Group A versus the leader of Group C is Anami no Kami versus Reap and Kill. And this is brought to you by Nigeria Esports Federation, folks. And we know, for those of you who are already here and watching, the first game was taken away by Izanami no Kami. It was a back and forth battle. It was up and down completely. And we wanted to see an all out brawl. And we didn't get to see that. I myself didn't get any break. I'm parched. My throat is parched. I'm cool. I'm quenching my thirst in this break that we had. And thank you for waiting for those who, who, who have been. And we want to show that Mobile Legends is not only existing in PH in Indonesia, but also in Nigeria. Once again, I am your cast and host, the caster and host, Kronos, that's going to be bringing the action for tonight, and we are going to go straight into the draft for game number two in this upper bracket qualifier towards the finals of the Road to Riyadh, and it's going to be Izanami no Kami versus Reap and Kill. Izanami no Kami already have the first game in the bag, and once again, picking the blue side this time, and maybe... And maybe, at the moment, you know that the sign of Reap and Kill will have to come up with a better game plan because I know for a fact I definitely cannot hear the sound coming in from their side. So they have to put something up, right? They have to put something up coming in against this game and this monster carry Takinaga. Absolutely dominant in the game 16 kills i mean am i watching a ranked game i'm not trying to throw any shade but you gotta have a counter the way this carry was just left open in these big team fights there was absolutely no one going for takinagi he is the absolute target that you have to lock down and get Hello, these kills so you want to ban out this carry if you are on the side of reap and kill because they're not able to reap neither were they able to kill this carry yes you gotta kill one time probably and that was too late into the game and they need to come up with a better game plan and on the other side for the side of team Izanami no Kami, they ban out the Louis once again, a respect ban going in towards the side of Team Reap and Kill. And Estes being banned out, they do they seem like they don't like the Uwe composition. But the way Torian J13 has been playing this Franco, I don't think they should be afraid of this Estes. They should just leave it open. Because mind you, the way he's been hooking, some would say someone would say he's a fisherman, even. You know, that hook is just out of nowhere, catching somebody off guard, completely getting them down with a bloody hunt. Just going to show how efficient he has been. The constant pressure, I told you about this in the previous game, folks, you know. You have this early game pressure. If you're able to land these first few hooks, it's going to be a threat. And not a threat towards the game, but also a mental threat on the opposition. And looks like the side of Team Reap and Kill. Listen to my words. I don't know if you're watching. I know it's a little bit of delay in the stream, so they can't be watching. Don't forget, they're not able to stream snipe. We have about a two minute delay. But yes, they have discussed that this carry was a big threat. They take it off the table, but what did they leave open? This export, and Moon has been fantastic on this export. Only that it got outshone, outshone a little bit by Takinaga's carry. So by no means has Moon's export been, you know, mid-tier he's been playing absolutely crazy especially now the fact that you can flex this export into the jungle as well so now this poses the card of do you really want to pick up the fredrin quite early or do you really want to show this card of age the gourd I'm not sure if it's the right pick coming in so early but they go for the Akai this time so it seems like the meta is still developing between these two teams. 
I am not a fan of this Barats in this very point because yes, you have the Daytona Welcome, but you're just going to be so far apart from this board. And if that, that's been the story of the game, right? If no one is able to catch Takenaga on this carry, who's going to catch Tata on this board? Because Gord just wants to be in the back line, just Kamehameha, everyone that missed the gush, and then it's just true damage. And Moon's not going to be able to reach unless he has the flicker. He has to play aggressive. So now you're forcing Moon to get aggressive. And if the response is there from the side of Team Reap and Kill, oh, it will away. just be, it will be a much, much, much harder for them to come back from. So we will see how it will go. Matilda being left open. Oh on, my Dexter. god. Our time. Is banning. Oh my god, folks. For those of you who are watching the stream, who have just joined us, welcome. We are on the road to Riyadh 2024 for the World Esports Championships. This is the Mobile Legends Bang Bang National Qualifiers, day number nine for Nigeria. Myself, Kronos, the caster and the host of for tonight. I'm bringing you this action. Izanami no Kami versus Reap and Kill, the upper brackets playoff match. Izanami no Kami already picked up one game in this best of three series. It is match point for them. And now they have given away this Matilda. It only goes to show that this can go all the way to a three match series, given the fact that is such a utility gamer. Kindness. You have the guiding, you have the extra middle heal, you have the circling eagle, you can be so aggressive, you can bait out so many ultimates. If used perfectly by Ace, I believe they made a substitution. Right? Hitori has gone off, Ace has come on. They have made a substitution. If Ace is able to pull out the maximum value from this Matilda, I think they're just going to be unstoppable. This, this hero has been banned out in every single competitive scene. Even in your rank games, you know it's been banned out for a reason. And I know I'm stressing a lot on this Matilda, but you have to understand the value that this hero brings on the tape, right? You, you can be aggressive. You can be completely... Like you just click on the Guiding Wind and you're just out of there. You could be taking their red buff. This Matilda could just guiding wind flicker out, and next thing you know, this Akai is just this panda, this big fat panda. You know, he's just flying out of there. And I don't know what else to say, folks. If that's not overpowered, if that's not overpowered, I don't know what else could be. Because right now, we see Claude and Nana being banned out, and Nathan and Yu Zhong being banned out. And right now, Takinaga picks up the Brody. So you want to see the snowball coming in from the side of Team Izanami no Kami. But at the same time, at the same time, you want to see Utah, who has this late game Sicilian. It's going to be a big problem. So Azur has picked up this EXP lane Thomas. So it's gonna be a good one. And Time to take the Roger, I was gonna say, Roger with a Matilda could be aggressive and could be really strong, but at the same time, it should be all right. But I think, I think Trevor will be going into this goal lane. I think I know he's gonna be going into the goal lane with this Bruno, but I think he has to play a little more aggressive than he would like, especially knowing that he's going up against a Brody, so. The aggressiveness coming in from both marksmen. So it's gonna be a story of the gold lane. It's gonna be it's going to be a battle of the gold lanes. So at the moment, we wanna see all that works. Again, it's gonna be a competition in the gold lane. If you're able to win that gold lane battle, they're gonna able able to take the game. And Hitori, although did a great job in the first game, unfortunately. Reap and Kill did not pick up the victory, and the victory did go to Izanami no Kami. But on the other hand, with the substitution bringing an ace, with this powerful, the ace up their sleeve in this Matilda, will it be enough to get the victory for them in game number two? We will find out. Because right now, folks, don't take your eyes off the screen. We are going to be going straight into the lane of dawn. Because right now, 
we are here. He's a Nami no Kami versus Reap and Kill game number two. And I believe that they have a don't don't mind the screen a little bit. They swapped uh, they've swapped the you know the names, but on the on 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 the, on the other side, it, we still know, right? We know which players are. Izanami Kami is gonna be the blue side, and the red side is gonna be Reap and Kill. So, it seems like whatever the issue was, was sorted out, but at the same time, I do hope you understand that we do not want to give any unfair advantage to any of these teams to maintain absolute professionalism. Even though if there is a communication gap, we want to make sure it's sorted out the earliest. And you can say for sure that it has been sorted out. But meanwhile, look at that aggressiveness coming in. This time from the Barris, Jinx realizes that if they give the advantage early in the jungle towards the side of Reap and Kill, they might go away with the game completely. And now we want to focus the attention. And the Trevor has gone there as well. Attacking out a little too late for first blood going in towards Tata there in that melee their aggressiveness two kills down the aggressiveness from the side of Isanami no Kami has failed and that is the power that this Matilda brings in to assist and Tata is so back in the back line just able to get a look at that guiding win Akai going in so aggressive to Hakanaga might be biting off more than he can chew but right now it seems like Tori NJ wants to get that guiding win should be able to save him out it doesn't have that and I think that was a little too aggressive coming in from the side of Reap and Kill's jungler but still, the bright idea, still able to cancel out that early game lead that the Izanami Okami wanted to achieve. But absolutely pulling out all the stops. And now these Barretts will have to think again before invading. And that's the power of this Matilda. Looking to get to the level 4 power spike. Wanting to get that Circling Eagle to get the priority the Turtle Utah has to recall. Because the Sicilian uses up a lot of mana. So, not really good mana management, and Azur, look at that rotation coming in from the side of Reap and Kill. They know they are the aggressors in this game. They know they have the advantage. They want to make the most of it, and Moon, once again, zoning out the right target. Tata forced the flicker out. Moon doing an absolutely great job in the EXP lane, like, just like the first game. Will we see the steal coming in this time by Heavy Spin is there, and there, get the steal. Jinx able to pull off the Retribution, they told us well, just to get out there. Torian J has the Minoan Fury, he has used it as well, and we want to see a little more coming, and they're going on the aggression once again. But it has failed the first time, so will they do it again? Yes. No, they don't want to. They back off, they learned their lessons, and, you know, they, like they say, fool me once shame on you fool me twice the shame on me and i don't think they want to be fooled twice this time because uh, the early game pressure coming in from the side of reap and kill is just going to be a little too much given the fact that they do have a matilda i cannot stress this enough matilda is just too strong to be left open and i don't see a way that the side of reap and kill will be giving out this game unless and until it's just a misplay coming in but the sicilian does add an extra level of advantage for their side the later the game the, the further the game goes into the late game stage the sicilian is going to be scaling as hard and that bat impact is just going to be doing chunking down anyone that doesn't have any sort of magic armor and you don't want to see that happen and again the attention all in towards the goalie just like i said before the games are in the draft trevor versus takinaga you want to see Early game versus early game, that's what it is. Sakai going in, uh, Ace with the guiding win, wants to get a little aggressive, does have a certain eagle, doesn't want to commit. The Rosa Strike coming on, Jinx is here, the cavalry has there, the, di the dinosaur is loose. Look at that, Minoan Fury with the heavy spin being used, but he will fall. Two of these Corrosive Strikes coming in from Takinaga, and they're going in all in 4v2. Tata is a little too late to the party, does have the Mystic Gush, but can't really do anything. And that aggression has paid off for their side. And they are trying to do their best to hold down this Matilda, this ace up their sleeve in the side of Reap and Kill. And trying to make sure, trying to neutralize the threat. And that they have been doing really well. Azur though, the Thamuz should be winning out that 1v1 battle, but against next morgan it's just a little too hard. It all comes down to all these micro mechanics that we'd like to see between these players. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, these are professional players. They are much better than us in every given stage. And they know what they're doing. So, yes, you have your comments. I know that the YouTube chat has been disabled for a bit. We had a little bit of technical issues, but if you want to put your comments on, just go towards the Twitch chat and like we see. This heavy spin coming out from Jinx and Circling Eagle Ace just getting out of there. Doesn't want any of that beef. 
his team wants to back off. They need some more time to farm up because the gold difference right now is a 4k. About 3, not even 3. My math is so bad. 2.8k towards the side of Izanami no Kami. So they have the first game. Best of 3. They want to be taken away in this game number 2, right? They want to make sure they snowball. Just make it a 2-0. Call it a day. Take your rest. Make sure you prepare for the next following games in the following days and Jinx has been quite aggressive with this Barrett and it's been working out look at Azur he has to go and defend at the top lane meanwhile in the bot lane Ace just making sure to cut the wave they want to give the advantage to Trevor Trevor just like Takenaga is going to be a strong marksman early game scaling strongly into the late game phase as well the mid game power spike will be the one to watch out for both teams but the goal lead He's not going to call me 17k now, 3k is being extended. Takinaga just poking. Again, the snowball effect is just to look at a bat impact. Ace is just jumped too low. I think he's just being a little too aggressive on this Matilda. Heavy spin is there, but no one fury coming out this time from Torian J. A little too much and Moon going to the last insanity. This is what I was talking about. They have to play aggressive and aggression is the name of the game from coming in from the side of he's a Nami no Kami. They get that kill. Moving on 5 to 2 in the kill score and extending the goal lead to 4k now. It was 2.8, it became 3, and now it's 4k. Right, so now, and then look at that, the turret is there. Takinaga, the snowballing, and they have an insurance policy, right? This Sicilian is just their insurance policy. He doesn't have to do anything, he just has to be in the back line, use the bat in the back, make sure he doesn't die in his team fights because you want him for the late game. You don't want anything else. And Moon just using the last intent to get that turret. Zoning Azur away. This true damage is too much for Bila. And now they're focusing their attention in towards the final turtle of the game. And actually giving it to Takinaga, not using the retribution. So splitting up the gold. And we want to see the aggression come out. Look at that. He's just walking into the jungle. This dinosaur doesn't care if you pull the panda. You know, you could be the biggest and strongest panda in the world and uh, you're just nothing in front of a big dinosaur and that's what this barracks brings in that big frontline presence and Torian J the Minotaur he could be setting up for potential so there is the Minotaur if you have he's been coming on Mystic Gush at the right time to make sure he can provide something but more on the back line last insanity Azur going in the double kill going into where Utah Jinx will fall but they get two in the process make that a triple for Utah getting that kill bad impact and finally they are online folks the damage is there from the center of Izanami no Kami and Reap and Kill need to think of a game plan once again to defend their turrets because the way things are going I don't think they're gonna survive this game it just give us a little bit of time you know to look at the itemization just to see what they've purchased Warax going in immortality he's going going in for the ice cream one for food Torian J absolutely perfect build the dominant size Jinx just going straight away for that tanky route and broadly going straight away just wants to pierce the back line of the enemy and Utah going for the traditional talk of destiny lightning truncheon build not the best use it still works out gives it a little bit of tankiness not the greatest I would say but still it's not that it's wrong it is a great build indeed just that maybe could maybe going for a genius one right now would provide a little more damage and look at the way they're going finally azure picks up this dominant site so you know this combo is going to be tanky he needs the corrosion site though I, I didn't i don't believe i got a chance to see it but i think he does have the corros corrosion site and it all comes out yeah he has the corrosion site dominant size look at that, trevor trevor's just starving for gold right now 4489 compared to 6000 of this Brody. He is starving for gold. He needs some kills. You need to feed this Bruno in order for him to carry the game. Look at that moon is just being a nuisance. It takes all five of them to get a kill. Missing gush. They used everything. And he still survives. Utah comes in. The cavalry is here. Certainly Eagle. Will they want to go for the triple knockup? No, he doesn't. Backs off immediately. Wants to survive because it's a 3v5, folks. And look at that aggression coming in. They're able to survive. They get the Lord. And Ace is just in their faces, but I think it is a little too aggressive. At this point of the stage, you gotta respect the damage that comes in from the Sicilian. You have to. The damage is too much. I mean, I, we can't see the stacks, but I know for a fact it's 100 plus. The way that damage is just deleting everyone off the face of Mud Land of Dawn, it's just too much for them to deal with. 
and it just goes to show the dominance coming in from Izanami no Kami is not a joke. Maybe the Battle of the Titans has just been... Hey, it's the Battle of the Titans, but which Titan reigns supreme? I think Izanami no Kami is doing a fantastic job, especially Moon. He's the unsung hero for this series, right? Doesn't do much, but the movements on the map, the zoning, the absolute push that comes in. Look at that. Circling Eagle, get on towards Moon. Look at Moon, just destroying the backlight, last insanity. But a heavy spin under the turret. He still has the immortality. Mid lane with a bad impact going in. Again, the wrong targets are being pursued. I mean, one tree is there. Will they have the damage with a flicker as well? And killing spree going on towards Taki Naga. He has been the MVP for game number one. Maybe will it be possible for game number two? And Circling Eagle once more. And still able to back out of there. Yeah, and the Trevor. Trevor hasn't died yet. He's 0 0 and 3 on this Bruno. But he is starving for gold, right? He needs some gold. You gotta funnel all your minions on towards him now. So if they're able to funnel the minions on towards Trevor, they do have a chance for a comeback. But again, the way that Moon has been zoning the back line of Reap and Kill, it's. I think it's just. I don't see a way that Reap and Kill can come out on top unless they get a complete wipeout. And the wipeout will only come from a mistake if Izanami come, if no coming, makes a complete mistake. So, and the way that things are going, I don't think they're going to see one. Because look at Tori and Jay. 0, 1, and 10. 10 assists in this game out of 10 kills for his team. So, 100% kill participation rate, right? So, he has been there in every single kill that his team needs him to be. And... So as the primary shot caller for the team, I think he's doing absolutely great. It just goes to show how he has to go on and call the right team fights, and he's been doing that perfectly for his team. Twenty seconds to Lord Spawns. We're not going to see much happen in that time. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, we understand that the chat has been disabled a little bit. Just make sure you hop onto the Twitch stream if you want to put out your opinions and want to be active in the chat. I know Izanami no Kami have their fans and so does Reap and Kill. And maybe you can see a way out for Reap and Kill. And uh, if it's possible. And look at Moon once again, just garnering the attention of the entire team for Reap and Kill. He is able to survive. They can't kill him. He is unkillable while the rest of this team just takes up the Lord. That is the absolute quality of the EXP laner. If the... I'm sorry, folks. I don't see a way that they have a comeback because they've lost two inhibitors. The mid lane and the bot lane is just one inhibitor remaining. And the wave clear is there, right? They're able to clear the wave right now. Barash is stacking up. Doesn't have the blue buff. Doesn't really need it. Jinx. It's a luminous lord that's marching down the mid lane. He's gonna go straight for the crystal. Just being blocked a little bit, but there it is. The engage coming in, heavy spin being used. Guiding wind just to make sure you get a little bit out of there. Minoan and Fury coming out of the wrong target. Mystic Gush being used, but the kill going on towards the panda. The panda will fall, and Moon on towards the back line with the last insanity to get the kill. But the base crystal is the target, and Izanami no Kami will pick up the victory. And we'll pick up the series at 2 and 0 oh in this best of three. We'll be moving on to the further stages of the tournament in the upper bracket in the clash of these titans from group A and group number C. And maybe maybe the fact that maybe the fact that Reap and Kill just this didn't have the right I don't see I see the brilliance of the draft coming in from the side of these enemy coming, right? The first game, absolutely brilliant draft. The second game Yes, they gave away the Matilda, but they forced the aggression in the early game. They tried to invade. Yes, Reap and Kill had the advantage, but they were not able to push their advantage into the further stages of the game, which kind of cost them. Like, if you have the advantage when you have a Matilda, you're Nakai. You should be pushing that advantage. You're a Gore. You, you basically, nobody can reach you in the back line if you play safe enough. And they're just pushing their advantage, but they were not able to because the goal lane battle between this Brody and been talking out on this Brody and Trevor on this Bruno was just just so back and forth. Trevor didn't really die, but he wasn't given the space that was needed, like how Takenaga was given the space. And meanwhile, on the top lane, Boom was just being an absolute menace. 
and there was no possible way for them to contest any objectives coming from side of Reap and Kill. And the way that the side of Izanami no Kami played, if they continue in the same way, the same draft pattern, they could take away maybe the entire tournament. I know I'm calling it a little too early, folks, but it is possible the way that they've been going about. If nobody's able to target down Takinaga, I think he's just going to take away these games quite easily. And I'm not sure if there's a need for a game number three because it's already 2-0 in this best of three series. So it's just 2-0 to Izanami no Kami. They are moving on, yes, into the further stage of this tournament. This is the road to Riyadh, the qualifiers for the World Esports Championships. And now they're, it, it, let's not forget, it's brought to you by Nigeria Esports Federation. Now let's give and it's just a shout out to those working in the back end, doing a fantastic job making sure I am able to bring out the best action for you possible. Yes, we did have a little bit of lag issues, but you know, it was sorted out. Let's not worry about that. You enjoyed the game. He's an Amino Kami. Move on to the further stages. We're waiting to see who their opposition will be. The winner of Alpha Zeros versus El Cartel. The winner will be that. And meanwhile, in the bot, in the lower brackets, right, the the loser, which is Reap and Kill, now have to face off the winner of Oasis versus Dark Stars. So, so Dark Stars Esports versus the Oasis. That will be a nice game to see, but Reap and Kill really need to think how they go about their draft and how they go about their team fights. Because, yes, you won the group stage, you topped the group stage, but this is not the group stage. This is the playoffs. And this is a chance for someone to represent the country of Nigeria in Mobile Legends Bang Bang in the world stage. You're going to be going up against Onik, Kyrie, AP Bren, Flap Teasy, you know, Moba Zane, Hoon. Mo uh, you're, you're going to be going to these big giants and you want the best from Nigeria showing their best in this world stage. So... Every team, every team is going to be putting out their all, but it'll just goes to show they got to rethink the way that they go about their strategy. There is still time. And let's not forget. Let's not forget, folks. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here in the chat. I know the YouTube chat wasn't working, but again, you know, we will try and fix that the next time. I am your caster, your host, Kronos. They're bringing you the best action that was possible in this tournament, in this match for today. I will be here for the next games to come as well, for this playoff, the entirety of the playoffs. Hopefully, I get a partner sometime soon. But if it's if not, it's all right. But at the same time, don't forget to follow me on my YouTube channel. It's Kronos. You're going to type it in the chat. You'll find me there. Um, and I do regular giveaways as well. You can see me on Twitch as well. I'm just going to pop in, just say hi. If you're able to hit a follow, I would appreciate it. And I do regular giveaways over there as well. Just make sure you support your local caster and also the entire team, the production team that was behind this entire tournament. Nigeria Esports Foundation Federation. And I keep messing it up, but nice Nigeria Esports Federation. Thank you for bringing us this wonderful tournament. But yes, that should be all, folks. And I'm your caster, your host, Kronos. Once again, bring you the World Esports Championships qualifiers for the road to Riyadh. And we'll call it a night. Good night. I will see you next time.
songs. My heart beats slow down. I won't take this world's abuse. I won't give up on refuse. This is how it feels when you're bent and broken. This is how it feels when you're dignity.